Hey, we're live Sunday morning. Thanks for jumping in. We're down here in the basement today, the messy, messy basement. It is like a tornado has gone through here. We got, uh, I'm in the process of reorganizing all my outdoor gear, camping gear. Basically took all my hammock camping gear and uh, took what I, what I can use for camping and there's stuff there on the side. There's tarps, there's Reflectix, there's... There's stuff. There's some kid stuff behind me. It's it's mess. But anyway, channel update time. Haven't done one in a, a little while, so just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a channel update. Uh, let you know what hopefully uh, I can get uh, uploaded to the site as a regular video because I'm having a lot of trouble with this video. I uh, recorded. Um, it's a tent review uh, from our old family camping tent. So if you've been checking us out on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, over uh, the summer, we've you've probably seen us camp with it, and you've seen last week's live stream where I got the new tent. So, so I had put together kind of a long-term review, but I'm having trouble exporting because I shot some of the video with uh, an Android phone uh, using the video camera for that, thinking that could be a good alternative camera, and just just garbage, garbage. Anyway. Having having issues, having issues exporting. So anyway, uh, so basically we'll go over some of the uh, questions that were on um, the channel, posted on the channel. We'll answer them. Um, did a live stream yesterday morning, kind of did a, a beach video. Uh, remarkably, one of the few places where I got like full bars in terms of quality. So. I always find it very interesting uh, when I do these live streams how quick the thumbs down comes. So I only got one, but it's a pattern. Mobile user from uh, from Canada. Anyway, um, let's go with some of the uh, questions here on the channel. Uh, basically, uh, one one of them started off on the Garmin Etrex Twenty uh, about how show the complete path of how to install custom maps on your e-trex and I kind of pointed him to the other video that I did on that topic and basically when you put an SD card into your Garmin device uh, you need to first to have a Garmin folder and then from there uh, you can put other subfolders when you plug in your your Garmin GPS uh, plug it into a USB cable you can open up the drive that's on the device itself and you'll see the folder structure there, and that's that's your guide as to how you can install maps. Now, maps are kind of tricky. You basically got your your standard base map. You got a supplemental map, which is images files uh, that you can play around with uh, as long as you make a backup of stuff. Uh, and then trying to put in like other type of maps, open street maps, and all that stuff that we've covered in other videos. Um, you know, you may have to play around with it or use Basecamp to send tiles to the device itself. Uh, but Basecamp for Windows 7 is causing a lot of problem for, for people. I encountered it myself when I was using it on a computer with Windows 7. So Basecamp is one of those software packages that Garmin has not touched in quite a while. So I don't know, I don't know if it works better on uh, Windows 10 or not, but uh, hopefully they'll either update it or use the mapping product from the lorm from their acquisition that maybe they'll bring that in they still got to play around with the maps but anyway that's one of the things uh, another question that came in yesterday on the garmin vivo fit how to reset uh, how come uh, it doesn't reset the calories um, just doesn't the same thing doesn't do the steps too so it's one of those odd things that the reset doesn't now when you do pair it with i believe with your smartphone when you activate it that way that should, if it's a different account, it should wipe it clean. It should wipe it that way. Uh, let's see here. I uh, had a question on the hammock camping uh, knots. How so? That was one where that was the one where I recreated uh, the uh, loop strap from my Eno Nest uh, hammock, and basically I just did a couple knots, a water knot, and um, a clove hitch to to tie on my webbing so that i can just clip on my hammock one of the uh, comments here was part of my ignorance but isn't it the first knot essentially an overhand knot on a bite um 
and that refers to the water knot. So when you're using a piece of webbing, and I don't have one, I got all the junk behind me, but I don't want to move to reveal more of the mess behind me. But when you have a, a webbing, uh, you use the water knot, and basically you just do a regular overhand knot, which is fine. And then what you do is you trace back around it to create the, that first loop. Uh, but that, that process of going back over the, 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 the trace of the knot when you're dealing with webbing, that what holds it tight. Because if you just do a regular knot, try, try to, to do stuff like rope, it, webbing won't, won't hold, it will slip. right? So that's why we use that knot for there. And if it does look like an overhand on the bike, it is, but you know, it is what it is. Um, okay, another question here on the Compass page for the Garmin eTrex 20. Uh, it says here, Gary says, Jim, why does the eTrex 20 allow you to choose magnetic north if the compass is not magnetic and you suggest to keep north reference to true? Odd that it gives you magnetic option if this is the eTrex 20 but doesn't have the electronic compass. So basically, uh, with a lot of these e-trexes so back then it was the 10 20 30 now it's the 20x 30x 30 being the electronic compass and 20 didn't have the electronic compass so you got to start moving for the compass to to point in the right direction uh, all that software on those devices are the same so it just just happens to be there uh, it's not useful but if you had the eTrex 30, which the, with the electronic compass, you'd be able to do it that way. Uh, let's see here. Um, another here. Had a comment on the Robocop uh, sound grenade. That's the thing that I did. When did I do that? This winter? This fall? No, last fall. Uh, so that's that little device, that uh, whistle that emits 120 decibels. Uh, to scare away some bears or other deterrents. So the comment was, this is the same as personal alarm devices. Definitely not a new concept. <coughs> True, it's not. It's just one of those things that can be applied to the outdoors. And uh, now the thing that I noted that the uh, Robocop, they got acquired by Basu.com. So if you're on Amazon and you're seeing, hey, it doesn't say Robocop anymore, and you think it's a knockoff, but no, so it was an acquisition. So still got the same products right there. Um, another question here on the uh, DeLorme InReach uh, was about map management. Uh, the question here from Jared was, how do you delete tracking routes once they're done off this map? So when you have your inReach device and any of the inReaches, here's the old Explorer, which is still supported, by the way. Um, when you do a track or a tracking, when you turn tracking on and off, that track stays on the device. And with the Explorer, and the same thing with the SC Plus and Explorer Plus, you get your 10-minute track, which will keep it track. And then on this one and the other two, it will keep a detailed track log. So you got two different types of logs. Gets uploaded or synced to the portal whenever you do a sync. Uh, to get rid of them, you just need to clear your trip data from uh, the, the trip computer page or the trip info page. So that's how it does that. And then for roots, you just need to toggle it on and off what you want to sync, only when, when it does syncing. Uh, and then had a quite a few uh, comments, well, quite a few, a little bit of a, not quite an argument, but uh, it was uh, how to share your location with the InReach SE Plus. Uh, the question was, does sending a message to Twitter or Facebook count towards your message allotment? I can't find answers anywhere. And I say, yes. Well, then he starts talking about, well, what about the preset messages? And I said, any type of message counts towards your message allotment so that's text email facebook twitter when you get a weather forecast that counts as a message however uh once he kind of gave a little bit more information in our discussion uh basically uh in the states uh you have unlimited preset messages in your plans we don't in canada so what are preset messages? 
those are the messages very similar to spot where you have uh, three message slots where you predefine your message and predefine where it goes and then when you're on your inreach you I believe you press and hold like for example this one you just press and hold uh, that one I guess and we'll send it actually that's something I never tried it on the device I should probably do some videos on that uh, so uh, so I guess it's unlimited uh, that must have been a new thing because I was on the road May and June to, to talk about the new devices and that wasn't an option that they wanted me to, to talk about. So it must be something very new for the US customers trying to uh, entice you to get on a subscription plan. So the downside of using preset messages is that you have to set them up when you're home. You can't set them up using the EarthMap app on your phone and you can't you know do ad hoc messages so you really have to think about just like when you did the spot when you set up those three messages which ones you want to use to set up so that you can take advantage of that unlimited preset messages so that was pretty neat I uh, got quite a few comments uh, on the live stream last week on the uh, the new tent like I'm saying here I am trying to export the video that was supposed to be today but I'm having quite a bit of problems and I'm trying. I'm sure it's the video that I took with the Android phone that is just messing up. So I am trying to uh, export it different ways. And sure enough, let me try to open it here. Oh, it only clips. It clips the video. So there's an extra two minutes of the video that is, that is not getting published. So I'm gonna have to. Might have to trim it up a bit, so we're going to have to fix that a little bit later. But yeah, so I had uh, quite a few comments on uh, the new tent, which is the Kodiak Canvas uh, Cabin Tent. It's 12 by 9 with the awning. And uh, there will be another video, more proper video of the tent, setting up the tent and, and, and using it and stuff. So that was my first experience putting up in the backyard and uh, yeah, worked out pretty nice. Uh, the other general comments were on uh, carving a canoe paddle with cherry wood. Somebody gave me a thumbs down on that uh, on on publish. So, ouch, that hurt. Anyway, uh, what else we got? Uh, any other comments here? As I scroll through, uh, one question here on the inReach. SC plus how to create contacts question was how do I sync the contacts from my iPhone to the device when you're pairing your smartphone to your inReach you have access to the contacts that are on the phone automatically so when you're composing a message so when you're using EarthMate for example um, when you compose a message via EarthMate it will ask you to access the contacts on your phone so you have your contacts so you don't have to export and import or enter all your contacts from your phone onto the inReach if you're paired you can do it that way what I do recommend people doing is enter those two emergency contacts that you need to get a hold of if something were to happen uh, put those on the device so you know misses your mom and dad uh, your best friend your boss at work and you know anybody else of importance all those other contacts that you may want to do messages on the fly uh, pair with with your phone earthmate and then you access the contacts and you'll be fine you don't you don't really need to sync to have sync uh, those contacts uh, question on three free maps on base camp again uh, there's a few videos that refers to that now it's, it is starting to get a little bit dated so you may want to check out some new stuff but uh, another one here is on again on the inReach. The inReach uh, videos and comments in general have been going up quite a bit ever since Garmin uh, took hold of them. Um, I might show a graph at one point where you know the activity of my inReach videos and soon the Garmin released um, the inReach boop start going up like that. So it's kind of neat Anyway, one of the questions here is uh, can you still reach the inReach user if they have not pre-sent a text email message with instructions on the phone number so 
he wants to contact someone that's hiking the GMT. Uh, I believe that's a John Muir trail up uh, out west. And he only has the internal Garmin email uh, inReach address. All right. So if you have an inReach device and your buddy has an inReach, you can send each other messages using the internal email address. So when you set up your account, you'll get your internal email, which is basically your username at inreach.garmin.com. And it's kind of like BlackBerry Messenger. Only those within the system can send it. Now, the great thing about that, it doesn't count against your uh, message allotment, so it's like free messaging uh, between uh, units. But if you want to send a message to somebody that you're following, like, for example, I was following Roman Gnome. Uh, he's doing the, the AT he hasn't posted a video in a little while. He used to have his map share. I used to check, and from the map share, if you have it configured right, you can send uh, a message. All you need to do is enter your cell phone or email address for the reply. But if you know their map share, then you can send a message, and you, you won't you don't need them to send a message to you first. Uh, boop, 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 boop. All right, and uh, just reason here, Jared is uh, the other message from uh, Jared uh, a week earlier. I guess he was doing his research here. Uh, so another one on the inReach. Can you map out the route on the Explorer device, or does it always have to be with the computer program? Say I want to drive to point A, point D. I have to go into the app, mark the highway. I'd be driving. Couldn't do it on the fly. Yeah. So basically. The navigation, the route, what they call the routing, is just you have to trace the route on the uh, inReach portal first. And usually the navigation is like straight line of sight. So it's not turn by turn navigation that you see with other stuff. And, and then this is a comment that I've been getting quite a lot and was starting to become kind of annoying. It's on the uh, Fitbit Flex, how to reset. And uh, what it, what was odd about this video is that part of the process to reset that particular Fitbit had to plug it into the charging cable. And the charging cable had a little pinhole. You would press the pinhole and that would actually do the reset. That, that I guess the switch was in there to do it. There was quite a few people that were saying that the pinhole wasn't there. And I'm like, well, I checked the Fitbit website because that's where I got the instructions from. Well. If you bought an Amazon third-party charging cable, it doesn't have that little pinhole, so you can't do the reset. Ah. Uh, boop, 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 boop. What else we got going on here? One question here about uh, the Garmin Vivo Active, the golf course and scoring. So does it measure your distance from the pin once you start golfing? I want to be able to choose my club based on the distance from the pin. Yes, the answer is yes. So when you're downloading the golf course, you're downloading the golf course. You'll, you'll have the distance to the pin, the 18 holes. That's the whole point of the golf application on the Vivo Active or even it's on the Phoenix 2 that you can keep track of your score and also know your distance from the pin. And that's, you know, as you're playing, you'll know exactly how far you are from the pin. So that's the, the cool thing. Uh, other uh, comments here on, we're just going through comments. Uh, that's going that were posted on the, on the various videos. Um, what else we got here? Oh, that's a, uh, I think we're getting close to it right now. Um, okay, so another one here it says uh, Jim, I'm looking to buy a Garmin Etrex 30X. Do you know if I can walk over a property with a unit and record positions with altitude, and then take that information to create a contour map? I'm an architect and wish to create my own site contour maps. Uh, both Garmin and my local store, this is the right unit, but the terminology they're using lean, leading me to think not. Any advice? Shouldn't have any problems with 30X, and the reason why is you have the electronic compass or the altimeter barometer, otherwise known as the ABC sensors. And those sensors, uh, when I uh, talked about uh, weather forecasting those sensors are what's used to really do to determine your elevation right GPS is good for this way but it's not very good determining this so that's why those extra sensors are used to determine elevation and so when you're taking your points 
you should have a very good set of data that you can move over to your GIS program to make the map. So it'll um, it'll just matter when you bring in your waypoints and let's say into Basecamp or whatever else program that you're going to connect your Garmin to. Uh, when you're exporting that data table uh, to make sure that you obviously export those right tables to, to get the um, elevation. And boop, 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 boop. And last one here was a comment uh, from uh, the Tom Tom Runner GPS running watch, and the question was, how accurate do you think these things are? Tom Tom shows 4.6k, and my mate's Garmin shows five, which is a big difference. 400 meters is a big difference. Uh, kind of hoping uh, his is right, so I've been running way faster than I thought. Than I thought. So uh, basically, yeah, it is, but it all depends where your how your wrist is. So it depends on the day. Oh, little ones here. So I'm gonna cut this short. Daddy. Yes, Alexa. I'm right up here. All right. I was doing a live stream. <laughs> All right, folks, uh, we'll just end it for now. And uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you guys think. Uh, I really don't have much. Uh, I've been having a really tough time getting into uh, getting some time to uh, shoot some videos. I do have a number. I do have a list of videos. Like I said, I'm having trouble editing one here, exporting. It's not <clears throat> not working for me. So I'm going to have to edit quite a bit more to, to make it work or find that clip that's bugging me. So... Uh, we got that. Uh, we'll, we're hopefully we can go out camping uh, next weekend. So hopefully there'll be some uh, more better videos on the tent and all that. So I'll leave you guys go, and I'll talk to you guys later. Come on, are you coming down?